Right, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Now, let me first of all apologize. There was not meant to be a two week break in between the last video of taking the gearbox apart off of Skoda and this video where we're gonna be uh, replacing the bearings and all that sort of stuff. However, sometimes things don't go to plan and I had a little bit of a hiccup uh, which caused this to be a little bit of a delay. Let me just explain quickly what happened and then we can get cracking on with today's video. So if you watched the last video, you would have seen that I stripped down and took apart the Skoda gearbox, which is still sitting there on my workbench all in bits. Now we diagnosed the problem, found out that the input shaft bearings had failed. And so with that confirmed, I went ahead and I ordered all the bits that I needed to get this thing fixed back together um, and back into the car. Now, one vital question was how far was I gonna take it? Was I gonna replace every single bearing in the gearbox or should I just replace the one that I know that had failed? Well, I asked you guys and I read the comments um, and I took the executive decision, even though most people I think said uh, to just change all the bearings whilst I had them out. I made the executive decision not to do that and I've just ordered the input shaft bearing that I know has gone wrong because the rest after a quick little inspection seem to be absolutely fine. And as they say, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. So I'm gonna leave the rest, clean it all up, um, and then just replace the bearing I know is bad, put it all back together. Now, I went ahead and I jumped on eBay and I found all the bits that I needed, added them all to my basket and got them delivered here. Now, one of the items I needed was I needed to order myself a hydraulic press. You can't remove the bearings easily off the input shaft um, without a hydraulic press. So I figured this was a good time to invest in one. It's always a piece of kit that I've wanted, but I've never really come across the right job um, to warrant buying one. So I went on eBay, found a press that I wanted. Um, there was a choice between like a six ton press and a 12 ton press. Uh, the price between them was like 30 quid and I thought to future proof myself just in case I need that little extra bit of pressure, um, I'll get a 12 ton press and then um, I'm sort of covered for future projects if I need to do a wheel bearing or something like that. So with eBay, I like to give things a week to arrive and if things don't arrive within that week, um, then I'll chase it up and try and figure out what's going wrong. Lo and behold, Monday, ordered myself a press, ordered myself all the bearings and all the stuff that I need to get. By Wednesday or Thursday, everything had come. The bearings had come and all the little bits and pieces that I'd ordered had all arrived. The only thing I didn't have was my press. Now I thought to myself, I'll give it till Monday, so Monday to Monday, a week's period. Uh, if it's not here by Monday, then I'll chase it up. Monday arrived, no press, didn't arrive, no emails, no nothing like that to say it was coming. So I took to eBay in search of some answers and lo and behold, I had a notification of a message saying that the press wasn't in stock. Uh, their stock numbers were wrong and they didn't realize they didn't have any left. I was completely unaware of this. I was sitting there waiting for it. Where's my press, where's my press? it was never coming. Um, they offered me a refund, or they said that they would put me on like a priority list to get me the press quickly. So I said, yes, put me on the priority list. As soon as I get one in, uh, please send it to me. They said it was gonna be about a week from then, so it would have been two weeks from when I ordered it. So I thought, I can't wait another week. That's not fair on you guys, the viewers, uh, to wait two weeks uh, for the next installment of this Gearbox video. So I thought, I'll order myself a six ton, and then I'll use the six ton to do this job, sell the six ton on Facebook after I've done with it, just like one use, get most of my money back, um, and then I'll wait for the 12 ton to come and I'll have that for future videos. So a few days pass after I've ordered the six ton, it arrives, three days. I thought, excellent, brilliant. I can get cracking with that, put that together, and, and I can start recording this video that you're seeing right now. So I bring the thing in the shed. This is it in the box right next to me here. Um, I brought it in here. I was getting all my camera equipment ready, uh, ready to set up, ready to start filming, unboxing this thing. A knock at the door comes. So I go out, not expecting anything at this point, um, and lo and behold, a 12 ton press arrives within an hour of the six ton press. So I now have a six ton, and I now have a 12 ton, and they both arrived on the same day, although I wasn't supposed to have the 12 ton for another week. So I never really needed to order the six ton, but I was unaware of that. What a palaver. Um, that is just the fun thing about ordering stuff on eBay. You never know when it's gonna arrive. Um, Communication is not great, so. I'm now stuck with two presses, but luckily enough, I spoke to my dad, and my dad's gonna take the six ton off my hands. Um, he's just gonna have that at his house, just in case we ever need to use one when we're doing one of his projects. Um, it makes sense for him to have that. So I'm gonna keep the 12 ton. That's what we're gonna be putting together. That's what we're gonna be using today in this video. Um, but the six ton is gonna to go to my dad. So all in all, not too bad of a result. Uh, it was just a bit of a palaver. So I apologize for the time it's taken uh, for this video to arrive. Um, it's been like two weeks, but it was kind of out of my control and I was just trying to 
uh, chase things up. But anyway, I think that's enough of a story. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. Today we're going to be putting the press together, that's the first job. I'm not going to bore you with that, I'm literally just going to do it and then the next clip you see the press will just be magically um, in the shed. So that's the first job, put the press together and then we can actually go ahead and start getting these bearings pressed off, putting the new ones on uh, and then we can start re-putting this gearbox back together. Uh, so I'm hoping by the end of this video that this gearbox will be all back together, uh, ready to go back into the car exciting times right so this here is the press in question this is the 12 ton as you can see shop press 12t comes in two boxes uh, weirdly enough the boxes for the 12 ton are smaller than the 6 ton so I don't know how that works but I'm going to unbox these things get it all together like I said I'm not going to film I'm literally just going to snap my fingers and the thing will be done um, I don't want to bore you with that and then this trusty 6 ton will be going to my dad at some point so it's going to live here for now I've sort of made a little place for it, I've had to move my few bits around but the press is just going to live here for the time uh, while we're filming doing the bearings and stuff and then I'll move it somewhere else at a later date. Also as well I said that I ordered all the other little bits and pieces, this is just sort of the bearings and um, gaskets and stuff like that. Uh, this is the main bearing that I ordered, so this is the one that's failed obviously on the input shaft. This one here, this is going to replace it, this is a SKF bearing. Um, apparently really good stuff. I did a little bit of research and SKF came up quite a few times. So I picked one of these up. So that's going to be uh, the main job. I went ahead and picked myself up a new brass ring. This is for the uh, drive shaft cup. If you remember, our one there is in three pieces. Uh, so I managed to pick myself up one of them. 15 pounds I paid for that, for a little brass ring. Oh, absolutely shocking. They did send me one with my seal kit, but it's not the right size, it's slightly too small. So there's that. I've got a set of three seals here. This is for the drive shaft cups as well. They live, one lives in there, one lives on the other side, and the other smallest one uh, lives in the bell housing. So I'll change them out as well. they are about a tenner for those three. I've got an exhaust clamp in here. It's not related to this job, but uh, I'll need that at some point. And then I've just got some RTV silicone because uh, the two halves of the gearbox that go back together, uh, they have to be siliconed where we took it apart. And there's a few other bits that need to be siliconed on as well, just so they don't leak gearbox oil out. So that is the bits. That is the press. Let's get this thing put together and we can start making moves, getting that new bearing onto the input shaft. <laughs> Ta -da! We have a press, yay! Um, that took a little while to do, uh, it's probably about 20 minutes worth of work. Not many bolts, it's just kind of awkward to do on your own because it is quite a heavy piece of kit. Um, so holding it all and putting the bolts in and screwing them all, all single handedly uh, wasn't particularly easy but this is what it looks like. As you can see, this is our bottle jack here, 12 tons. Um, I've gone ahead and set up our uh, shafts, our input shafts from the gearbox with the NAF bearing, you see it there. I've set it up how it's gonna be, um, just to give you an idea as to you know, what this is gonna look like once I start pressing this thing. I've used the black plates that they provide um, to hold the gear. So this gear closest to the bearing. I did a bit of research. You're supposed to remove this gear with the bearing. It's kind of the best way to do it. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. So that's now sitting on the plate this side, sitting on a plate on the other side. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, and then on this side, I've literally rigged this up, really just using whatever I've got in my shed. I've got a little uh, pipe cutter thing here, and then I'm using a ratchet just to support this side of the bearing. Um, so we're supported this side, supported this side, supported this side, and we're pretty much ready to press this out. I've got another little plate here, which I'm gonna use on top of these to press it out. This whole setup, the like the bearings and the input shafts, is really really tricky to press. Now if I go ahead and remove my own tool that I've made, as you can see one shaft is lower than the other by a good like three centimeters or so. Now the awkward thing is you need to press both of these out at the same time. With this one being higher than this one I needed to find a way to make these so that they're level so I can just put a plate on top like so um, and press them both out at the same time. So using my ingenuity 
I've come up with this, two nuts, three nuts even, on a bolt, and if I slide that inside the uh, shaft of that, you can see that that now makes them level. So I can put a plate on here and press them both at the same time. This bearing is a really, really difficult job to do. For your first job using a press, this is not the sort of job you really want to be doing the first time. But I've got it set up, like I said, you can probably see it a bit better now. Resting on the plate, resting on the ratchet. This plate is then gonna come down and sit just in between there like so. And then we can pump our press and that should push our things out. That's the theory anyway. Trouble is, I need to have four hands for this because I need, to just dropped the plate. I need to pump the uh, jack down, but I also need to catch the shafts at the bottom because I don't want these to fall. So I need to be able to hold these <laughs> and do the jack at the same time. Uh, it's not gonna be easy, but I'm gonna try and find a way. I feel like one of those, um, those press channels, have you seen them when they crush things in their press? Gonna bring the press down a bit, so meet up with it. Making sure safety goggles, because if this goes bang, um, I don't want anything going to my eyes, so that's a good precaution. Right. Are we ready? Oh, we've got movement already. It's nowhere near as tight as I thought it was going to be. That was nowhere near as hard as I thought it was going to be. Oh, I got it. I got it. Oh, did you see that? That was nowhere near <laughs> as tough as I thought it was going to be. There's the shafts. This is the left one. Looks like we lost couple of little bits but they're in the box down there a couple of little bits fell out here's our bearing there's one of the racers for a different one but here is oh, sugar here is the culprit here is our broken bearing off way easier than I thought it was gonna be that really did surprise me there's just our our gear that was on there right now that I've calmed down a little bit I've managed to put uh, the gear that I this is the one I used to press uh, I put the slabs under here, that's the one I used to press. It literally just pulls off and on. This one's not pressed on, as you can see. Uh, so that just slides straight back on. I managed to get all those little pieces back in there, so that's all back together. This one, nothing came off that, so that's all back together already. Our bearing is right here. And then what I didn't know is, on top of that bearing was sitting this thing, which is like a, a race for something. So that's gonna have to be pressed on, back onto this shaft this was on. So as you can see, that's a press fit. So once we put our new bearing on these, uh, that's gonna have to be pressed on afterwards. So make sure you remind me of that. I'll keep that safe. I've actually put that in the box nice and safe. But I'm actually really impressed with myself, actually. I am very excited about that. And uh, this thing came off an absolute treat. This 12-ton press, I was a bit skeptical at first that it wasn't gonna be man enough because the size of it. But it was enough to do this, which is the main thing. So that's our old bearing, you can hear Oh, ball bearings are knackered in that. So this will be going in the bin. And the next step is to get our nice shiny new one pressed on. So I'm gonna have to figure out how that's gonna work. Okay, here we go, the exciting stuff. As you can see, old bearing removed, new bearing sitting next to it just there. Um, I don't exactly know how I'm gonna get the new bearing on yet. However, I am willing to try a few different things. I don't think the press is gonna work. I can't seem to figure out a good orientation to have the press in order for this to fit on there. Um, but I've got it in my vise at the moment and it seems that I can have it like this as long as I can find a way of getting it on. Now what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to put this on top. It's going to sit like that, other way around. 
and I'm going to try and use a socket and a hammer and tap it down one at a time, do it, do it, do it, do it, and see if I can get it to go on that way. I know it's going to be a tight fit. It, the other one was really hard to get off, even with a 12 ton press, but I'm going to try it. Um, if I can get it to work this way, it's going to be a lot easier. It's got that far to go down, as you can see, um, and I've got the uh, thing in the vise, but it's got the soft jaws in, so the blue bits here are rubber. Um, so it's not going to do any damage to the teeth. I haven't just put it in some metal jaws. This one's quite loose, um, but it is holding it. Um, and they're sitting exactly where they need to be, so they're in line with each other. And the bearing just needs to go on top. So I'm hoping that with a little bit of persuasion, I can just hammer this down with a socket and get it to go down evenly and uh, easily enough. I'm going to make a bunch of noise. My neighbours are probably going to hate me, but... Um, this is the way we're going to try, at least try first and see how we get on. Right, camera set up. This is how we're going to do it. I've placed the bearing on top, as you can see. I'm going to use a 22mm socket. Deep one, obviously. That fits over there quite nicely. Now I'm wanting to hit on the inner metal part, the, one, the bit that's closest to the shaft. That's what I'm hitting on. Um, and I'm literally going to go one hit this side, switch over, one hit this side, not hard taps either, not hard hits either, just sort of a nice, sort of decent tap. So one the other, just so it goes on equally and so it goes on like straight down. I'm praying this is gonna work because I don't really have any other method of doing this. So uh, let's give it a go. I don't know how well you can see that, but it does seem to be working. You can see how much of the shaft is now sticking out the top and that gap is now, you know, less than a finger width. I can't believe that's actually working actually really well. Considering it took a 12 ton press to take the other one off and I'm able to put this one on with a socket and a small little hammer, that's kind of crazy. I'm gonna carry on. Um, I need to stop when there's like, I don't know, a tiny little gap in here. There's usually like a mil or two gap between them. So I'm going to carry on. Right, I don't know if you can hear the different sound when I hit that now. There's like a more uh, metallic sound. That means that these are completely seated down now. Um, the other side of this bearing race has a face to sit on and that is now directly on that. I am so happy that I've just been able to do that. You don't even understand. That made that so much easier just being able to use a hammer and a socket instead of having to try and configure something in that press. The press was great to get the bearing off. However, this is a definite recommended method to get the uh, new one on. As you can see, it's on. Let me just grab a torch. This is how we're looking. You can see there's a, a tiny little gap in there, which is like, I'd say it's about a millimeter, maybe two at a stretch, but we are completely seated on there. This is what the bearing looks like. You can see where I was hitting where that ring is around the inside. You don't want to hit around the outside. You definitely don't want to hit on the blue bit. Um, you want to hit as close to the shaft as you possibly can. So 22 mil deep sockets seem to do the trick. And that is that completely fitted now. Brand new bearings on our input shafts. Also, I'm not sure if I even pointed this out, but um, the bearing that I've used to replace the old one is an SKF bearing. I believe that's what they use from OEM. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. There you go, SKF on there. And the one that we've removed, which I, I'm gonna assume this is the original because I doubt this job's ever been done before. But that is also an SKF. That's also an SKF there, as you can see. So we replaced the exact same bearing with one of exactly the same quality. 
I was just standing back admiring my work um, and I realized that I haven't put this on yet. This is a pretty much a bearing race. Uh, the fifth gear is what sits on here, which is that thing right there. And on the inside of it, there's some needle bearings. I don't know if you'll be able to see this very well. I'll try and show you through there. Can you see on the inside? There's a bearing in there. And essentially, this race just goes and sits inside it like that. And so that needs to be pressed onto here. This came off when we pressed the old bearing off. Uh, this came off with it, so this slid up. And as you can see, it is a press fit. It needs to be hammered on there. So I'm gonna use the same method as I did to put this bearing on. I've got a 21 millimeter socket. Um, it fits just nicely around that. You can, see, oops, you can see that that fits pretty nicely on there. It's pretty much exactly the same size. So, and it also, important thing is that it fits over the top bit of the shaft uh, so that's very important so i'm gonna put this on to here like so i'm gonna push it down a little bit just to get it started and then we're gonna use a hammer tap it down um, just so that it seats on this other bearing I don't know if you would have been able to hear again, but like I said, when I put this bearing on, you can hear that the pitch of the noise when you're hitting it will change. Um, it starts off quite sort of uh, thuddish, so it's sort of a thud, thud, thud. And then uh, once it's seated home, which you can see it is fully seated down on that bearing there, um, it starts to make like a more of a metallic, like coin on coin sound if you were to hit uh, two coins together. Uh, so that is that now on there. Perfect, that went on really easy as well. Now, whilst it's still in my brain, and whilst I'm still out here with my gloves on and stuff, I am just gonna quickly put this new um, brass ring thing onto this drive shaft cup. Now, I'll remind you again, uh, our last one broke into like three different pieces when I took it out, as you see. The other one's okay, so this one here is fine. However, um, the one off this one broke into pieces, so I managed to source another one. I bought this off eBay. And would you believe this was 15 pounds for this little thing? Um, it seems quite simple to fit. There's like a little clip that goes around here. We just have to take off this little thing here. And then we just slide this on, put the clip back on, and that should be it. But I just want to do it while it's in my brain, otherwise I'll probably end up forgetting and won't put it on. I suppose you guys actually want to have a listen to this. This is the uh, the old bearing that we've removed. You can see uh, that it only failed on one side. This side on the left is actually buttery smooth. I don't know if you can hear that. There was no play in that whatsoever, no grinding noises, nothing. So this side was perfectly fine. It was the right hand side that let this whole thing down. And as you can hear, trash. So there you go. It'll now live the rest of its life as a decoration on my shed wall. Right, well, with that replaced, um, I think I'm gonna call this video there. I don't wanna drag this out and make it too long. Uh, if I was to put the gearbox back together now, this video would probably be an hour long. You lot will be bored um, and I don't want that. So catch me in the next one where we put this gearbox all back together. I'm really excited to see this thing put back together so we can get it back into the car. So join me very soon for that one. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.